Several years ago, I was making my normal morning drive to work, and I came to a red light at a big intersection near my house. And I sat there, I was the first one in the line of cars at the light, waiting for it to turn green. Now keep in mind, I'm one of those people that when the light turns green, I wait for less than five milliseconds before I head out into the intersection. Now when the, when the light did turn green, I started to move my foot to the gas pedal. However, something out of the ordinary got my attention. It wasn't like it was a voice, it was more like a feeling someone wanted me to wait. So I sat there for a couple of moments with my foot on the brake, and right about the time I would have been in the middle of the intersection, a giant 18-wheeler sped through the red light. I would have been demolished. Now, I sat there and pondered what would have happened, and a few seconds later, on the other side of the intersection, another 18-wheeler going the opposite way ran that red light right at the time I would have made it over there. If the first one didn't get me, that one would have. Now, I can't say for sure what made me pause, but I've always concluded that it was my guardian angel who alerted me to the problem, and that pause saved my life. I think you'll agree with me that it was a miracle, and I should be thankful for it. So let's ponder today's readings as we consider, first, do we have miracles in our lives? Second, how do we ask for miracles? And third, what's my role in providing miracles? So first, do we have miracles in our lives? And the answer is obviously yes, we do have miracles. My incident in the car was one, and I'm sure many of you have, ha have your own stories about things you can't explain except to say that God intervened somehow. However, even before our fantastic stories, we need to acknowledge simply the miracle of our existence. Our creation came out of nothing. Consider all of history up until the moment before your conception. You didn't exist. Even if you say, well, the conception of a baby is just biology, you have to recognize the minuscule possibility of one cell finding another. And the fact that everything is already set in place for those cells to unite and then divide and divide and divide, and later for them to specialize at just the right times and in just the right locations to sustain life for decades. The simple fact any of us are alive is a miracle. In fact, is that how you see every other human being, as a miracle that God made happen? Now, in the Catholic Church, like we just said, that around the country today is Respect Life Sunday, kicking off a month of Respect Life activities, and that's why the Knights of Columbus have brought roses up here to remind us of that. It's wonderful that we continue to remind people that life is sacred. However, it also speaks volumes that we don't all just wake up every day and recognize all of the trouble God went to just so that each one of us exists. Now, today is also a special day when we annually remember that God did more than that. October 2nd is the day we celebrate the Feast of Guardian Angels. Not only did God create you, he created another being with the single purpose of taking care of you and me. As we celebrate Respect Life Sunday, let's remember God respects your life. He respects the life of your family. He respects the life of a fetus in the womb. He also respects the life of criminals. He respects the life of every last human being. Do you respect all lives? Now, second, I said that life is a miracle, but how do we ask for miracles? Do you ever pray for something and then it doesn't come? Do we ever pray and say, I've been good, God. Why don't you give me what I want? I expect most of us have had those thoughts or feelings at some point in our lives. But first of all, we need to make sure we remember that God is not a giant vending machine where he passes out miracles, how we insert a prayer, press a button, and get what we want. In fact, God is the one who's in charge. He knows much better than we do. Today's gospel reminds us, does the master give thanks for the servant doing his job? The Greek word used for thanks is charis, which also means gift. Stated differently, does the master give the servant a prize for doing his duty? 
For us, we should never feel entitled to God giving us a prize for our good works. In fact, we should recognize the first point. God has given us the miracle of our lives. He has granted us existence that will go on forever. How could we ever repay that? When we pray, do we do so with entitlement and impatience? Or like the first reading encourages, do we remember that the answer of God will come? It will not disappoint. If it delays, wait for it. God has something great planned. And what better example of that is there than the uncountable and heartfelt prayers that people have offered for an end to abortion since the early 1970s. Those prayers came for 50 years, mostly for legislation to overturn Roe versus Wade. And then seemingly, out of nowhere this summer, God had another plan. God always has a better plan. So third, life is a miracle. God grants other miracles if we're patient. And we might ask, what's my role in providing miracles? Now, I want to start this question with an important statement. In the wake of political change that's making abortion illegal in many states, people often accuse Christians of only caring about getting babies born and not caring about the mothers and families. So let's be perfectly clear. Catholic Church has always put itself in a place to assist mothers who are, in, who are bringing about the miracle of life. The Catholic Church is pro-woman. If we as Catholics believe that life is a miracle, we must offer our support to those who offer their bodies as the dwelling place for each miracle of life. Now let's also be perfectly clear about another point. I've said before that we need to always remember the victims of abortion. Those victims absolutely include the mothers who have had abortions. And if that's you, you should never, ever feel like we as a church are condemning you. If anyone ever condemns you, send them to me and I'll be happy to explain. Because what we do offer is a different kind of miracle, the miracle forgiveness. God is calling you to that wonderful gift. If you've had an abortion or helped with one, the Catholic Church, me included, is begging you to seek forgiveness in the sacrament of penance. Go to confession and begin your healing because we want you back. We want you to be rid of that pain that you experience. Now for everyone, what miracles can you offer others? First, Let's be bold in what we're doing regarding life. St. Paul wrote in today's second reading, God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. Now this means we're not the ones to light fires and start fights. We're the ones who act so boldly out of love that we change the world. We need to vote in the coming election that we decide, that, that's going to decide so many important life issues. We need to spend our time helping those in need. Next week, you'll hear more about Walking with Moms in Need, a new initiative our parish will kick off to support mothers. Pope John Paul II, in his letter Evangelium Vitae, reminded us that what leads to disrespect of life is a lack of solidarity with society's weakest members, the elderly, the infirm, immigrants, and children. What are you doing to assist any of them? Do you volunteer at Loving Choice Pregnancy Center or PACN? Do you donate to Catholic charities? In the same letter, Pope John Paul II also says, the family will always remain in accordance with God's plan, the sanctuary of life. What are you doing to make your house a place where life is valued? Is your family a place that respects the miracle that every person is? Like that pause at the traffic light that saved, saved my life, we need to save lives. And the only way to do that is a miracle. We have to change the world. Are you ready to do that? Do you believe that Je what Jesus tells us, that we can ask for a tree to be uprooted and planted in the sea? Can your prayers uproot the evils of the world and launch them into oblivion? Do you believe, St. Paul, that you have a spirit of power and love? Do you believe that God's vision will come to fulfillment? 
Are you ready to help create a world so permeated with love that no one even wants an abortion or a murder or any evil against another person? So our challenge for this week, increase our faith, Lord. And that faith and trust, let's go make that miracle happen in our houses, in our parish, in our community. Let's promote the value of life in every moment and in every way. St. Anthony of Padua.